one quick thing you can do to start making more money immediately, I mean like right now, is to shave your stupid ass beard and your mustache. Be clean shaven, man. Clean shaven. And let me tell you why. There's a lot of studies that show that men who are clean shaven make more money. In fact, 98% of the men on Fortune 500 list, 98% of them are all clean shaved. No mustache, no beard, none of that nonsense. As a matter of fact, according to one study in 2003, that employees viewed clean shaven men as being better managers and leaders. And if you want to make more money, well, you probably want to be some sort of entrepreneur, which means you're going to need employees, so people working for you. And being clean shaven seems to bode well in that regard. There was a study done in 2004 by Montclair State University. The researchers asked people to sketch out what they think a criminal looks like. Yeah, a thief, a scoundrel. And over 80% of those people drew men with facial hair. From that, we can extrapolate that men with clean shaven faces seem to be more trustworthy, or at least they don't look like criminals, right? So if you want people to do business with you, you probably don't want to come across as a guy criminal or an evildoer. And to corroborate that, there's another study done in 2013 by the Journal of Behavioral Psychology which stated that men with facial hair appear more threatening. Now, maybe if you want to be threatening, that's cool. But here's the thing. If you want somebody to buy from you, if you're a salesman, or people to buy from you, they have to know you, like you, and trust you. Those are the three things that, you know, the cardinal rules, right? They're, these are axioms of sales. And if you seem scary, threatening, well, people don't trust you as much, right? By default, which means you'll make less sales, which means you'll make less money. When I used to work for Abbott Laboratories, uh, Abbott Laboratories is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. I did sales and marketing internships for them during the summers, and they required that all their salespeople be clean shaven. I mean, it was like a requirement. These are the reasons. But then we can also just take it back to the Fortune 500 list. 98% of the men on the Fortune 500 list are clean shaven. No beard, no mustache, no stubble, nothing. Clean shaven. 98% man, that percentage is too high to be negative. So the data is pretty clear. If you wanna make more money, shave your dumb ass beard off. And to help you with that, I launched a partnership with Dollar Shave Club. All right, I had enough of this asshole. Um, Brooke Howell, Brooke Thea Howell, Shy, Brooke Thea Howell, Brooke Thea Howell, Shy, Brooke Thea Howell, Brooke Thea Howell, Brooke Thea Howell, Shy, Brooke Thea Howell, 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 Brooke Thea Salutations to the whole for elect out there, man. You brothers that sincerely do this thing in truth and sincerity. I'm the preacher, man. And this week's topic is going to be entitled... Sh uh, see that? <laughs> Same was about to make me say shave your beard. Grow your beard, Israel, man. All right? Grow your beard, Israel. Uh, inspiration come from this guy. His YouTube channel is... um, He's a fitness YouTuber. And it's uh, Brandon Carter. And um, even on the comment boards, people wasn't feeling this guy's uh show, man. See, I made a comment here and, you know, pretty much saying that a beard separates a man from a woman and a child, man. And people were agreeing with me on the comment board and liking it. And let's see some of these comments. Uh, the stuff you do for affiliate stuff is getting out of hand. I like you, but uh, completely disagree with the video. Um, let's see. I'm going to be real with you, Chief. This ain't it. That's BS. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are saying this is bullshit, man. Because it is bullshit. Look at this. It's got a whole bunch of dislikes. You see? 118 dislikes. The people are, yo. First of all, beards, beards are, are, are getting in, man. All right? Beards is really, is like trending right now amongst the people of Israel. Not because it's commanded for the Heavenly Father for you to have a beard on your face. Because the women are getting into that. Women are starting to get into guys that have beards and tattoos. That's just the shit that's popping right now. So, you know, whatever the chicks are into, guys are going to be into and um second of all nigga that 98 percent of the list ain't no israelites on that shit it's all edomites all right uh so-called white people and they naturally be shaving their shit off because they having a feminine spirit on them man I'm, I'm gonna go into these scriptures man you israelites out there man especially the ones of you that know that you're israel and still shaving your face off you got to get yourself right with the most high, man. This is Leviticus 19 and 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shalt thou maul the corners of thy beard. All right, so you shouldn't be destroying your beard, man. All right, your beard is supposed to be a badge of manly dignity. It's a badge of manly honor. Again, as I said in the comment boards, 
A beard is what separates a man from a woman and a child. I'm talking about somebody that hasn't hit puberty when I say child. Okay, because you you people out there, y'all don't understand. According to the scriptures, a man is a man when he turns puberty, when he gets his puberty. Um, that could be from the age of 12 on up, man. Okay, so that's what separates a man, all right, from a woman and a child, man. And, and we're going to go through some scriptures. You're going to see that's a glorious thing to have a beard, man, on your face. And this guy is saying shave it off as a means of success. Well, in the scriptures and in ancient times, it's a stark opposite, man. You will shave your shit off as a sign of... Uh, shave your beard off or shave your face off or bald your head as a sign of warning because this guy goes on in the video to tell he he goes on in the video that tells you to be bald headed let me see if i can play it let me see more money if you like this video hit subscribe let me see you can guess hey for your butt Bottom. this nigga's a dick and a chip with dollar shave club this is a billion dollar company too you got a billion with a b right what they want to do for five dollars they're gonna give you a training body cleanser this amazing you definitely need to try it out and one anyways man the guy goes on to say uh to you know pretty much bald your head man you're not supposed to be bald in your head either man all right we're supposed to be looking like how the most on the sun look man how they want us to look that's what hair on your head all right in a beard man all right if you're bald it naturally that's a different story okay uh, you you might have the uh part where you know you're bald in the middle but you have hair around the rest of your head. Well, you can't go ahead and bald the whole shit. That's off, all right? You can't bald your whole head off, man. Because the scriptures, I'm going to go into it right now. All right? The next scripture is, uh, well, there's a following verse. It says, um, it's like, yeah. Uh, Leviticus 21 and 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard, don't make any cuttings in their flesh. And this guy violates pretty much all three. He got a bald head, all right, no beard on his face, nothing. And, of course, he has cutting in his flesh, which is uh, tattoos. That right there shows you that it's all bullshit because if um, tattoos are not... Tattoos are not so-called, um, like, uh, friendly and, and uh, business and moderate. Like, why is that? Because when athletes do something professional, they cover up their tattoo, they wear long sleeves, so you know that tattoos is not associated, associated with being professionalist, professionalism, but certain jobs, such as UPS, where you have to shave your whole face off, so-called be, um, uh, to have like a, a welcoming look, you could have all types of tats on your bodies, so that shows you that that's all bullshit, man, it's to feminize you men out there, man, and you, my friend, um, I'm just saying that as a term, this, this nigga is not my friend, but you... You've been a feminized guy, all right? You're very, you know, you've been a feminized. That's why you got your whole shit bowled off, man, all right? You're supposed to have some type of hair on your on your, on your face, man, okay? <clears throat> Being a children of Israel and you an Israelite, and this goes out to all you Israelites out there, man. Grow your beard, man. Stop fucking around. Stop getting your shit lined up and shaved off in uh, 5 o'clock shadows because there's other Israelite groups out there that tell you that's fine, man. That's not so, man. You're supposed to have some roughness to you, man, all right? Hey, that's how the most I wants us. All right, that's like a lion shaving off its mane. The mane of the lion is the mane of that of the lion is its glory, man. All right, so we're gonna go through why men would shave their beard off in the ancient times because well we're gonna go into it and I'm gonna prove that you only shave your your um beard off as a sign of mourning. Not no goddamn fashion statement, man. This is Job one and twenty. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground. And worship. So uh, Job did that because he was catching pure hell, man. All right. When that hell started to come upon him, he did that as a sign of mourning, a sign to lament. Right. I'm gonna go to the next scripture. All right. If I'm flying through it, you know, I'm gonna try to. I'm trying to. You know, I got. I get ready for camp later, so get some sleep real quick before camp. This is Jeremiah seven and twenty nine. It says, "Cut off thine ear, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places." For the Lord Yahweh Shai hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. All right, forsaken the generation of his wrath. See, so cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, meaning um, lament. Okay, so cutting off your hair, bowling yourself was a sign of lamentation. Even though we ain't supposed to do that, um, you know, it became a custom amongst uh, Israelites to do that as a sign of mourning, man. All right, as a sign of mourning, you know. Or breaking a vow of a Nazarite, okay? Some of these things we're going to touch on a little bit. 
Spirit allows. It says, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 6. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried. Neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves well for them. See that? So, <clears throat> amongst the heathens, that was done as a sign as, uh, of lamentation. Uh, cutting themselves, because they used to cut themselves for the dead. That's why the Most I said, don't do that. All right? Then I uh, their head, man. All right? And of course, you know, Drake being uh, a fucking whore, a spiritual whore, will adopt the customs of the heathens, man. All right? <clears throat> So we ain't, we ain't supposed to be bought, making uh balling ourselves and doing all this extra stuff, man. All right, again, that's a sign of lamentation. All right. Now I'm gonna jump to um, Isaiah 22 and 12 and says uh, one more point proving the only time you know men will shave their face off or ball themselves um for lamentation. This is Isaiah 22 and 12, and in, in that day did the Lord Yahushim Yahshai of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to Gurdon of sackcloth, so see that? Balding and weeping and sackcloth for so, uh, signs of humiliation and, and lamentation, man. All right, I'm going to go into the commentary here with my um, mice or that, and I'm going to go to the Barnes Bible commentary. I'm going to go down to the part where it says, um, was it Bar uh, Barnes or maybe it's Clark? It's like, no, it's not Clark. Uh... Is it Gil? Maybe it's Gil. It's lock it. I swear it was Barnes. Maybe it's the next precept I have. Um, let's see. It's lock it. Bear with me, brothers. Okay, it's in Isaiah 15 then. Okay. It's Isaiah 15 and 1. Here we go. Uh, again, just beating in the point. This is uh the burden of Moab. <laughs> Isaiah 15 and 1, the burden of Moab, because in the night are of Moab, are of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. I believe R should be a city. Let's see. Yep, city. The city of Moab located south of Arnon River, perhaps the capital. Here we go. So the burden of Moab, because the night of R of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence, because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. He has gone up to Bejith and Debon, the high places, to weep. Moab shall howl over Nebo and over Midan. All their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. See that? So even the, even the, um, the other nations knew, man. All right? That's how come um, when the host, uh, David Men, got his beard shaved off, parts of their beard shaved off by the... um. Moabites, they couldn't go back in the camp because the Moabites understood, man, that you're supposed to have beards on your face, man. That was a sign of um, manly dignity and to defile a man's beard, you know, it was very humiliating, man, all right? And very, uh, you know, that was like, oh, let's go into it. Let's go into what the historians say about it. Again, I'm in the Barnes Bible Commentary, and I'm going to go to that part speaking about the beard, all right? Let me scroll down to that part. Um, He says, um... Let's see. Okay, here we go. It says, on their heads shall be baldness, right? Now, this is Barnes' commentary on it. It says, to cut off the hair of the head and the beard was expressive of great grief. It is well known that the Orientals regard the beard with great uh, sacredness and veneration. And we are Orientals. Orientals, Orirai just means men of the East. Okay? <clears throat> it says, and that... Um, and that they usually dress it with great care. And you see brothers do that now. Brothers put oils, different type of oils in their beard. All right. That was also done in the ancient times, man. Different oils make your beard grow. Okay. So, you know, when you look at beard growth, uh, different things to make your beard grow, you see different oils. So men will pride themselves in uh, having nice smelling beards, long beards. All right. <clears throat> you know, it says great grief was now is the total opposite. Forget about it, you know. Um, the, the one, the few jakes that's growing their beards, it's mainly for a fashion statement. You know, again, it's to get pussy. And back in the ancient time, women didn't, women were, really didn't have much say as they do now. All right. So women ultimately, that shows you, man, they, they just really into power. That's what women are into, man. So once we get the power, trust me, man, these chicks are going to be soaking their panties when they see a man with, with a, a full beard, man. <clears throat> it says, um... Great grief was usually expressed by um, striking external acts, 
Hence, they lifted up the voice in wailing. They hired persons to howl over the dead. They rent their garments. And for the same reason, in times of great calamity or grief, they cut off the hair and even the beard. Now, here's Herodotus, uh, chapter 2, page 36, speaks of it speaks of it as a custom among all nations except the Egyptians. Why is that? Because the Egyptians already like to just bald themselves, man. Look at this doof up on um, top. He looked like an Egyptian, all right? By the way, the Egyptians were dark-skinned Africans, so-called Africans, all right? And they love balding their heads, man. That's why the Mossad told us not to do it, not to be like them, because that's some things that these Africans are into, balding themselves, having sex with animals, being faggots and homosexual. A lot of laws that we read about, the things not to do, the Hamites were practicing it. The heathens were practicing it, man. That's why the Mossad separated his people, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans from these nations, man. And for you to want to shave your beard off, well, you said it in the video. You want to be like the Fortune 500, man. So this is nothing new under the sun, man. All right? Which on for Fortune 500 was nothing but Egypt uh, modern-day Egyptians, all right? Not by nationality, but by rulership. Uh, Esau, man, all right? The so-called white man. It says to cut off the hair... As a token of mourning, so also Homer says that on the death of um, Patroclus, they cut off the hair as expressive of grief. See that? So uh, let me go on, skip that part. It says, see also Otis. This also, the custom with the Romans, the Egyptians, the, the Scythians, and the modern Cretans, uh, you know, cutting off for the dead. The principle on which it, this is done is that thereby they are deprived of what is esteemed the most beautiful ornament of the body. Let me read that again. Let me let that sink in. It says the principle on which this is done is that thereby they are deprived of what is esteemed the most beautiful ornament of the body. So the most beautiful ornament of the body is your beard, man. All right. At least that's how these people uh, back then were seeing it, man. All right, is your beard? Men had competition. Oh, I had a bigger beard, and you know what I'm saying? You no, know, nice beard. It was about that, man. Okay. It says an idea which lies. A hey, uh, Aaron had his beard down to his skirts, man. It says an idea which lies at the foundation of mourning in all countries and ages. An idea which lies at the foundation of mourning in all countries and ages. So, to take off the most beautiful part of your body, well, homie, that's like a chick um, shaving off her head, man. It's like that's the most beautiful part of a woman is her long, nice hair. She cut it all off, weeping and crying. Okay? It shows that she was in mourning. Hey, that's what happened when we took on um, these, um, the woman, when we uh, went to war and we got um, our booties. All right? We got women of war, spoils, they would do that. Cut their nails, you know, cut their hair. It says the loss of the beard also was the highest calamity and would be expressive of the deepest grief. It is, says D.R.V., uh, RV, who has devoted a chapter to the ex exposition of the sentiments of the Arabs in regard to the beard, a greater mark of infamy in Arabia to cut a man's beard off than it is with us to whip a fellow at the cart's tail or to burn him in the hand. Many people in that country would far rather die than incur that punishment. I saw an Arab, Salakia, I saw an Arab who had received a, a musket shot in the jaw. And who was determined rather to perish than to allow the surgeon to cut off, to cut his beard off, to dress his wound. See that shit, man? So that, man, knew, man, look, man, man, touching my beard was, chopping off my beard was like, yeah, damn near touching my fucking private parts, man. It was so close and dear to me. That's how men used to look at their beards back then. But now, our people have become de degenerate and lack knowledge, right, and follow after the deeds of um the wicked white man that seduced them to do these um to think this way man all right it says his resolution was at length overcome but not until the wound was beginning to uh gangrene he never allowed himself to be seen while his beard was off 
And when at last it got abroad, he went always with his face covered with a black veil that he might not be seen without a beard. And this he did until his beard had grown again to a considerable length. See that, man? All right. And I'm and this is again, this this shows for brothers that can grow beards because I know not every brother could get or uh, grow a full beard. But whatever you could grow on your face, you grow that thing, man. Don't bulge your face. Buckhart also remarks that Arabs, that the Arabs who have from any cause had had misfortune to lose their beards invariably conceal themselves from view until their beards are grown again. It says, compare Isaiah 3 and 24, Isaiah 22 and 12, Jeremiah 41 and 5, and Micah 1 and 16. See that? So having a beard on your face, um, and, uh, and, and, and it, it's a, it's a sign of dignity and shaving it off with signs of mourning. The idea is that the Moabites would be greatly afflicted. Jeremiah stated the same things of Moab in Jeremiah 48 and 37, man. All right. So continuing on with the lesson we see in that, man, it was a real fucked up thing to cut your beard off. But they got shit out here today like uh, Dollar uh, Shave Club were encouraging men to shave their face off, man. Really to break the law, statutes, and commandments because this thing is all about Israel. You heathens, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Your judgment is ultimately going to be slavery no matter what. Okay, but the, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the ones that are scattered amongst these nations. Y'all got to get yourself right and grow your beard if y'all could grow your beard, man. All right? No, no uh, five o'clock shadows or don't shave your fucking face off for a damn job, man. Fuck that, man. Have some faith, man. The most I'll get you a job where beards are allowed, man. All right? Have some integrity. This is numbers six and two. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When either a man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree for, uh, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of of the vows of separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separates himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and he shall let the locks of, of his hair on his head grow, of his head grow. So this is going into the vow of a Nazarite. Basically, this is the only time you're able to grow your, your hair and your beard out at the same time, man. Because, you know, you're not supposed to have uh, long hair, okay? And, um... And a long beard, all right? Actually, that's actually the etymology of the word weirdo, to have a long hair and a long beard, man, all right? You're supposed to have a moderate amount of hair upon your head and a long beard upon your face or facial hair upon your face, man, all right? And there was two types of Nazarites, okay? You had one that was uh, promised through, through the parents to be separated unto the most side from an infant, all right, or even before they're born, and you had another that was uh, a man or uh, uh, that took the vow upon himself, Okay, so that's the only time you're supposed to, again, have um long beard and, 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 and long hair. And when you break that vow, then you shall bald your head. Okay, that's the only time you should bald, she should bald um, <clears throat> your shit off, man, when you break that vow. And that's why the Apostle Paul did the same thing, man. All right. All right. So those are the exceptions. And when you... um. Bold yourself. This is verse 18, number 6 and 18. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. So that's the only time you break that vow, man. You shave everything off your eyebrows, everything. <clears throat> All right. But, you know, <clears throat> I wouldn't advise nobody take no vow of a Nazarite, man, in this society right now, man. If, if, man. If you got a guy that want to be a Nazarite in America, man, just keep an eye on him. That's all I'm going to say, bro, you know, because you, you're tripping. That's just being all righteous, okay? <clears throat> hey, with that, man, Israel, grow your beard out. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak, Wadash, double lines to the apostles, and Ella's a great millstone, which you well. And salutations to the whole for the elect out there. Shalom.